Hey everyone, Bruce here from Medieval Collectibles, and our brand of the month for July 2018 is Art Gladius. Today we are going to be taking a closer look at what might be the most iconic sword in all of Western mythology, Excalibur. This is the black and gold Excalibur sword from Art Gladius. This beauty is made from 440 stainless steel, making it a very durable yet low maintenance decorative sword. Overall, the black and gold Excalibur sword is 44 inches long with a weight of 4 pounds 3 ounces. The blade is 34 and a half inches long with unsharpened edges for added safety, while the single-handed grip measures just a little over 6 inches. This shining and shimmering crossguard is about 9 and a half inches wide. The grip is wrapped in two sections of black leather, giving it a very luxurious feel. The pommel is about 2 inches in diameter and has gold accents on both sides. My favorite part of this sword, however, is the acid etching on the ricasso of the blade. It has these flourishes on the top and bottom of an illustration of King Arthur, who is dramatically pulling the sword from the stone. When it comes to how Arthur first obtained Excalibur, there are two different origins, depending on which author compiled the tales. The first origin is from Robert de Boron's Merlin. In this version, a sword stuck in an anvil appeared in a churchyard on Christmas Eve, and whoever was able to pull the sword from the stone would be named King of England. Many who adhere to this origin believe that the sword and the stone was Excalibur, although it is never directly named as such. The Disney film The Sword and the Stone sticks to this version. The other origin of Excalibur can be found in the work Les Mortes d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, which is an English retelling of the Arthurian legend that had been assimilated by the French. In the Mallory version, the wizard Merlin leads Arthur to the Lady of the Lake, an aquatic spirit who presents to Arthur the sword Excalibur. This is usually the version that makes it into the majority of King Arthur films. In either case, however, how the sword appears and is presented makes it apparent that the sword is not of this world. In addition to being virtually indestructible, Excalibur was said to have the ability to blind Arthur's enemies. In the Mallory account of King Arthur, he says, then he drew his sword Excalibur, but it was so bright in his enemy's eyes that it gave light like 30 torches. Whenever I read the Arthurian legends, I always assumed the sword was this beautiful, shimmering weapon made by the gods. And for a long time on television and in film, the sword was indeed this gleaming, reflective blade. Recently, however, as Hollywood has taken a grittier and more realistic approach to the legends of old, it seems the sword has stopped being this otherworldly beacon of light. So whenever I hold this weapon here, I feel as though the legend in my imagination has been made whole again. If you are a collector of decorative swords, or if you're a fan of films like John Borman's Excalibur, this sword is a must-have for your collection. I would like to remind the viewers that while this is indeed a very heavy and very durable sword, it is not intended nor has it been designed for any sort of practical use. Thanks for watching this video everyone. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the Medieval Collectibles YouTube channel to stay up to date on videos just like this one. We'll see you next time.